Hello and welcome to the video, I'm Michael and today I want to talk about reducing noise in your audio, specifically clearing up some misunderstandings in the difference between noise gating and noise reduction, which are two entirely different things. So everything I'm talking about here works in any DAW, it also relates to live sound and producing inside the software. So let's just dive right in and I'm going to show you the noisy audio and then we're gonna look at different ways to fix it. I would strongly recommend using headphones or studio monitors to listen to this video. Sometimes you just end up with a piece of audio with way too much noise in it, such as this guitar recording. The recording itself is good, there's just too much noise. Let's take a listen. You can hear this noise is at the start of the recording and it permeates through the entire thing and it's awful. So my favorite way to reduce noise, which I've shown in another video, linked just here and in the description, is called noise reduction or noise removal. And that is where you actually take a sample of the noise and you can use various softwares, plugins, DAWs to do this. The software scans the noise and then it applies various filters and processing to reduce the noise from the entire sound. This is my favorite method um, and you'll see where the confusion arises in just a moment. What it does is it takes the waveform from this to this. So it's removed the noise from the whole thing. And if we compare the original to the noise reduced one, here's the original. And the denoised one. You should be able to hear quite clearly that the noise has been reduced across the entire recording both before and during the performance. I do have a step-by-step -step guide for how to do this, which I'll link in the description, but I think this is the best technique for anyone doing podcasts or recording vocals, guitars, because it removes that static hiss, the background noise from the entire recording. But this is where the confusion arises because tons of people have been saying all over the internet, not just on my videos, also on Discord, Reddit, all over the place, Tons of people have been saying, this is too complicated, why don't you just use a noise gate? So simple, so easy. The problem is, a lot of people don't seem to know how a noise gate actually functions. Now to some people this will seem overly simplified, but when you're new to this, this stuff's complicated. A noise gate, such as this one here, doesn't actually reduce the noise in your recording at all. What it does is it listens to your recording, and if there's not a lot of sound, it just cuts everything out. And then if it does hear enough sound, crosses the threshold, it lets everything through. Your voice, the guitar, the noise, all of it. So I set up this noise gate and I've printed out, exported the audio. And this is what it looks like. So you see it's cut the noise out, but whilst the guitar is on, we still have tons of hiss and tons of noise. Compared to the denoised guitar, where you've got a lot less background noise. You can see the color here. It's a lot brighter, a lot more high end. A lot darker here. And this seems to be a topic that just crops up more and more because many beginners reach for a noise gate because it's called a noise gate. They think it's removing their noise, but they don't realize that for what they're trying to achieve, it doesn't actually do an awful lot. And then people uh, are still unhappy and they're not satisfied with the amount of noise in their recordings and quite right. But then the question arises, what really is the purpose of a noise gate? If it's called a noise gate, you know, why can't I use that? Well, noise gates are extremely useful in certain situations, mainly live sound. So imagine you've got a singer on a stage and a load of instruments. When the singer is singing, it's great. When they stop singing, you need to cut that mic out because you don't want the guitars, the drums to bleed in and cause all sorts of feedback loops. So in live sound, noise gates are usually essential. And if you don't need one, then you're just very lucky. Another example is extremely high gain guitar tones. So when you're playing the guitar, it's fine. You can have noise in there. It's so chuggy and huge and distorted. But when you stop playing, you need a noise gate to cut out all that static hiss and hum from the amp because you don't want that to be picked up. And another example is drum kits. So if you're you know, hitting a snare, you've got a snare mic, you don't want all the other drums to bleed into your snare mic. So if you have noise gates set up for that, it's gonna give you a really clean and punchy sound. But often in the studio, noise gates are not actually very useful because you might as well just trim your audio uh, and cut out all the noise on, on the sides of the audio anyway. And if you have a particularly noisy audio, I would recommend either re-recording or applying the noise reduction technique. There are two more things I wanna say, but hopefully that clears up the misconception is that, you know, raw signal, you've got noise and signal, noise gate, 
the actual signal itself, your voice, the guitar, will still have all the noise in it, but the noise is just cut off the sides, basically. Whereas with a full denoising software, you're actually reducing the noise in the entire signal. There's two things I want to mention. The first is, even if you have a hardware noise gate, you see these channel strips, they do a really good job, but they're just the same as the software. When, the, when you're speaking or when the guitar is on, you're still going to have all the noise coming through, so it doesn't matter whether you're using hardware or software. And the final thing I wanted to mention is that you need to be careful when you're denoising not to do it too much, because a bit of noise is actually fine. And if you push the denoising software too far, whichever one you're using, it can sound a little bit like this, a little bit filtered, not so nice. And sometimes if you do a little bit less denoising, or find a nice sort of sweet spot in the middle, you can still retain a lot of the nice quality of the guitar without ruining it with the denoising. So sometimes a bit of noise is fine, it's just down to you to decide how much is too much. And often I would draw that line for denoising at if it's distracting you in the context of the whole mix, then start denoising. But if you can hear that in the context of the mix and you can hardly notice it at all, then I wouldn't bother reducing any of the noise. But I hope this video has cleared up that little misconception. I hope I kept it nice and simple and uh, that you can get on and enjoy recording and reducing noise and just having fun in the studio instead of wor worrying about all this stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.